Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you various different ways that you can make your PlayStation 4 portable. So let's say if you were going on a camping trip or you were going away on a journey somewhere and you didn't have any access to any AC electricity. By using the methods in these videos it might give you an idea of how you can still use your PlayStation 4 when you're away from home. So let's get started. The easiest way to use your PlayStation 4 away from home is just to use Remote Play. Now Remote Play is supported on a lot of devices including the PlayStation Vita. But you can also get it unofficially on devices like iOS. So here you have an Apple iPod and I've downloaded an app called R Play. Now it's not supported by PlayStation but it's been working for around about a year now. And if you plug it into an MFI controller, that stands for made for Apple or made for iOS, then it's much better because you haven't got to rely on the on-screen controls. You can just use, for example, the left analog stick and the buttons here. But the problem is we're always going to have an issue with lag when using remote play. And I'm going to show you an example of that now. I've driven to an area with a really good reception. So I'm in a built-up car park now. And uh, if you have a look here now, I've got a full 4G signal. There we go. Okay. You can hear that the music's skipping every now and then. Yeah, so look, even with a full 4G signal, do you see there that it's still breaking up? And I've got this on the lowest settings as well, but let's see, I reckon the PS Vita might work better than this. Yeah, it's still breaking up. So as you can see from those real life clips that you've just seen there, it does work, but it's not very reliable and it's not the same as sitting at home with your controller in your hand playing your PlayStation 4 in front of your TV or monitor. Right, let's move on to another one. So in this setup here, we're going to pretend we're going on a car journey and we want to use the PlayStation 4 Slim in the car. So if you have a look here, you can see that I've got a monitor built in to the top of the PlayStation 4 Slim and it kind of makes it look like a PlayStation 4 laptop. Good thing about it is it clips into place so you haven't got to worry about it falling off when you're going over bumps or around corners or anything. So you can just sit this on your lap and then use it just like a laptop. Right, okay, so the problem we have is, in a car, we haven't got any AC power. But what we do have is 12 volt supply in the car. So you can get yourself an inverter. Now remember, this is for the UK, so it's going to look different depending on the country you're from. But in here, we've got DC input, 11 to 15 volts, and then it's going to output, this is going to convert it to AC, 220 to 240 volts. So this is ideal because this can then power our PS4 Slim when we plug this into the 12 volt supply. So you know like your cigarette lighter, just plug it into there and then it's going to power this. Now you've got to be careful because this one says it's rated at 300 watts but in my car I'm not going to get anywhere near 300 watts because you need to find out what the fuse is that protects your cigarette lighter. In my car it is 15 amps. So if you do your maths you've got 12 volts times 15 amps and that's going to give you the watts and that's 180 watts. But the problem is because it's converting DC to AC there's going to be quite a lot of loss on that so you're not going to get 180 watts out of my car. So although it says 300 watts here you can't plug in a 300 watt device into my particular car because it won't allow it and a lot of cars are 15 amp fuse protected. Some cars are as little as 10 amps. So if it was only 10 amp, you're only going to get 120 watts out of it. And again, you're not going to get that because of the losses going from DC to AC. So you need to be careful of that. But if I was plugging in, for example, an Xbox One X, then I would struggle on that. But on this one here, it's going to be fine because this is rated at 165 watts. But that is what the power supply that feeds it this doesn't actually use 165 watts. Even if you were to probably connect every single USB port, have a disk running, have the controller charging, it's still not gonna get near 165 watts. It does vary depending on the website you go on. Some are as low as 80 watts, some are as high as 120, but either way, I'm gonna be fine in my car because I know it's 180 minus the losses from here. So I don't know what that's going to be, maybe put it down to about 160 or something like that. It's still going to be enough to power the PS4 Slim. If you've only got a 10 amp fuse in your car, then you will need to do more research to find out exactly how much this is drawing because it might blow the fuse in your car. 
Right, okay, so let's show you the setup of this in real life. So now we're in my car and as you can see it's working here in the passenger seat. If you have a look this is where it feeds from, the 12 volt supply, that's max 15 amps, so that's 180 watts but a little bit less than that because of the losses from DC to AC. And then the inverter's down there, plugged into the inverter is just that little power strip where I've got the monitor and the PS4 Slim plugged in and that's it and this is the back of it here, you can see that I've got the HDMI going from here up to this point here and then the monitor supply and also the PS4 supply. And if you have a look at it, you can see that it works perfectly. Right, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of gameplay now. So here we go, as you can see, it's perfect. And again, nothing to cause lag because the controller is connected straight to the PlayStation 4, which is just beneath it. Now, I've got my engine running on the car because you will drain your battery flat in your car if you were just to let it power straight from the battery itself. The car has to be running so it can generate the energy via the alternator. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wife to just go for a little drive and I'm just going to show you it working as we drive along. Right so we're driving now and uh, obviously it's still working fine. I've only got one hand to play, so I'm not gonna be able to play it. I've got it still connected to my mobile hotspot on the phone here, so then you will be able to play your digital games as well. And just to show you a digital game working, let's go to uh, Mantis Burn Racing. Too noisy that game. Right okay but there you go it doesn't matter if you're driving along or whatever it's still going to work perfectly so this would be ideal if you were going on a road trip somewhere and you want it to keep yourself occupied or maybe keep your children occupied. Right okay let's move on to another one. Now this setup here is very similar to the car setup but the difference is we're powering it from our own power bank here so we can take this one absolutely anywhere camping or anywhere in the world you can climb up a mountain if you want and this is still going to work so if you have a look here this is the power bank that we're using here it's got four usbs but it's also got an ac output so it's a very powerful one if you have a look at the back you can see there that it is 42,000 milliamp hours and what that equates to is, if you have a look here, you can see the capacity is 146 watt hours. So let's say if, for example, the PlayStation 4 Slim was using 80 watts, then 80 and 80 is 160, in which case then you can see that you're going to get just under two hours use by using a power supply like this. Now it depends on what you're doing. If you're only going to be watching Netflix, it's going to be even less than that. So read up the figures yourself online about wattage usage of the PS4 Slim. Now let me show you this working in real life. So now we're outside and as you can see I've got the power bank feeding this extension lead here. One of them is going to the PlayStation 4 Slim, the other one is feeding the monitor and as you can see it's up here now. And then what I've done is I've used a hotspot on my mobile phone just to give internet access onto this. So let me show you a bit of gameplay. So as you can see, there's no lag or anything. It works exactly the same as if you're playing at home in front of the TV, but yet with this setup here, you can take it anywhere in the world. Now, if you listen, you can hear that the speakers do work. This little monitor here does have speakers built in. So I'm gonna put some Gran Turismo Sport on. Now, because of copyright claims, I'm gonna lower down the volume on this. So now you will get proper gameplay on this, there's no compromise, it's not like remote play where you have to have compromises all the time. You can see that it works perfectly. Now change the view. Yeah, so you can see that in this setup here, you're not going to have any problems playing the games that you want to play. Right, okay, let's move on. 
And now we come to my favorite setup here. So as you can see, I've got the monitor working here, but I'll show you that working properly outside in a minute. So we have our PS4 Slim here, and then out of it is taking its power from the AC outlet off the power bank. We've got our HDMI cable coming out here. It's going to this wireless sender, which is pushing that HDMI signal out wirelessly. This is powered from the USB port here. This needs five volts at two amps. This port can do five volts at three amps. So that's absolutely fine. And now on the back of the monitor here, 1080p monitor, we have the receiver for the HDMI wireless signal. So it's coming into here, this is receiving it, and then it's pushing it down the cable into the monitor. The power bank is feeding the receiver and it's also feeding the monitor as well. And we have our controller onto the back there. And it will work with zero lag. There's one millisecond of lag, so it works absolutely perfectly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all this here in the backpack, and then we can just carry this around and play this. And it's not too heavy. It weighs around about one kilogram, so a thousand grams. It's not light, but it's not unusable either. Right, okay, and then if you did wanna put your headset into it, of course, we can just plug our headset into the controller down the bottom here. But I'm gonna let the monitor speakers work. But if you did wanna do voice, chat and stuff then you will be able to do it via there obviously you're going to have to connect this up to your mobile phone hotspot again just purely because you want to be able to have the full range of games and stuff not being restricted without the internet okay let me show you it working outside so as you can see i've got it all tucked away in my backpack now and i've just got this handheld device here now it's really hard to see because of all the reflections but if you have a look this is a bit of rocket league See boosting. So now because of the wireless HDMI you can actually play any game anywhere coupled up with the power bank and remember this is going to give us just under two hours of play depending on the games different games will be more demanding than other games. I don't know how well you can make this out. Right, okay, let me just show you the the main menu there and if you have a look at it it looks pretty good so let's go back to horizon zero dawn and show you a little bit of that this is a disc game so obviously you're going to be asking for trouble walking along with a disc game but right and here we have horizon zero dawn again and again it plays perfectly because all the equipment's just in our backpack so the wireless hmi has only got a travel less than one meter I know I'm in the way of it, but it can go up to a hundred feet out in the open, so it's not going to have any problem with one meter at all. Right, so there we go, that is it. Tell me what you think is the best, most useful part of it. I think if you're traveling in a car, then the car inverter is the best way to go with the G-Story monitor on top of it. But when you're out in the open, I think this is quite a good option to do it like this because then you have a handheld device here and the heavy parts in your backpack, but you don't really feel it when it's spread across both shoulders. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.